It was a week ago today that the M2 MacBook Air turned up at my door and pretty much since then I've used it exclusively. I've gone on to the MacBook Pro occasionally but pretty much all this week I've used this. I've made videos on it, rendered videos, exported videos, I've done the thumbnails in Photoshop, I even produced a podcast on it with Ross Young that you can find on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify and I'll leave a link for that in the description as well. So it has done pretty much everything this week along with obviously content consumption and basic emailing and running the business as well. And it's brilliant. That's all I'm gonna say. It's brilliant. Have I missed the MacBook Pro? Yeah, to some degree. But when I remind myself that that MacBook Pro was over 2,000 pounds more expensive than this, the difference between the two is really hard to justify. Yes, it still has a place in my workflow for sure, and I will be getting back to it. I wanted to give this a really good run this week, and I'm glad I have because on YouTube this week, there's been nothing but derision almost for the M2 MacBook Air. People moaning about it. it's slow exporting 8K video, it's slow on benchmarks, it's slow on Geekbench, it's slow if you take up to the roof of a building and work in direct sunlight. Guys, it's fanless. It has no cooling inside. It is as light as a feather. And people are moaning that it struggles, or not struggles, but it's slower in some tasks than they may have thought. What do you expect? It is made for portability, but with that portability, you can still get all of your work done. I could export this video from this MacBook Air anywhere, and it wouldn't be that much slow. We're gonna find out in a minute. I'm gonna go back up to the office and we're gonna run some tests, and we're gonna have a look at how much slower this is than my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Now, I'm not doing that as a benchmark between the two machines, quite to the contrary. I want to show you how good this really is. Yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be a difference, but is it 2,000 pounds worth of difference? And also, does your workflow necessitate that you're gonna be doing that kind of work all of the time? Probably not. And in that case, you've got to question how good this really is. It's a fantastic machine. I'm a massive fan of it. I'm hating to see all the comments that it's getting. I've got this, the 512 gig version here, as you know, the higher level of the two base models that they released last Friday. And I'm glad I went for that. I don't know what the 256 is like, but I can't think it's that much worse. And for the kind of work this can get done, the portability that you've got, it's a no-brainer to me, and the cost. I'm not saying it's inexpensive. It's still 1,500 pounds that I paid for this, or around about that figure. But it's such a good machine, it really is. And also, just sitting in the evening on, this, on the sofa, I don't know it's there. When I bought the MacBook Pro on, you certainly know you've got a laptop in front of you. So I think what we're gonna do now is go back up to the desk. We're gonna have a look at exporting a video. It's gonna be a very small, simple little video file, but we're gonna do exactly the same and make the conditions exactly the same on this and the M1 Max MacBook Pro, just so you can see how close this is in performance to that real behemoth of a beast, a big, big machine that I've got sitting next to it. I think we're in for quite a pleasant surprise. I am determined for once and for all to show you how good this M2 MacBook Air is. All this rubbish that's been going around this week that you can't do any kind of graphic work on it, it really suffers. I'm gonna show you just how comparable these two machines are in the real world. No benchmarks, no geek bench tests. This is a real world experiment. And all I'm gonna do is use the video that I've done for my newsletter this week. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's a link to it in the description below. Just leave me an email and every Sunday afternoon I send out a newsletter just chatting about what's been going on this week behind the scenes. So if you wanna get involved with that, it'd be great to have you on board. So I've got the same project file here on both machines and there's nothing open. Uh, just for full disclosure, although it's showing nothing open there, I am recording the screen using QuickTime on both Macs so that I can uh, show you later on exactly what's been going on. The battery on the MacBook Air is 82%, the battery on the MacBook Pro is 68%. So we'll have a look. If I open up both of these folders, I'll try and do things right and left-handed so you get an idea of how quick these open up simultaneously, pretty much the same time there. If I go to the project folder in each case, see if I can do it. I didn't click that one at the same time, so it's gonna be fractionally behind but you'll see that there's no real difference in speed in how quickly they open up. I'll just go to full screen on there. Right, so we're ready to go. Exactly the same file, ready to uh, render and export. What I always tend to do is set an in and out point. So I'm just gonna come down here and set my in outs, and then we'll do exactly the same on the other machine as well. 
that's the out point and I'll do the same on here then I will pre-render it out to using the sequence render in and out I want to do everything that I normally do to export a video so you can see how quickly or what the difference is between these machines and to be honest I haven't done this before so I'm learning at the same time as you but I don't feel there's going to be an awful lot of difference between them temperature wise the MacBook Air is slightly warm but that's all I would say slightly warm nothing you would ever think is getting hot so it looks like clearly the MacBook Pro is working quicker and to be honest for the extra £2,000 that I spent I sincerely hope it does because otherwise I'm going to feel like I've been robbed by the end of this. But this MacBook Air has really surprised me. I've been using it pretty much all week long for everything that I've done. Not just content consumption, but also the general running of the business, emailing accounts, all that kind of thing. And also, of course, the videos that you've seen this week have all been done on this, the M2 MacBook Air. This is the 512 gig version I've got, don't forget, with eight cores of CPU, 10 cores of GPU. And as I mentioned, that is a beast over there, the M1 Max with 32 gigs of unified memory. That's gonna be the big, big difference, of course, and that's got four terabytes of storage. So we're virtually done over on the MacBook Pro. It's 82% rendered over there, 68% rendered on the MacBook Air. But again, let's come, I want to just remind you of this. Of course, this is gonna be slightly slower. It is a fan-free, fanless, no active cooling, ultra lightweight, portable, ultra notebook. It's a very different beast. I've always thought this is designed, okay, can be portable, but basically it's designed to be left in one place that can be moved. Whereas this, its whole reason for being is that it can be mobile, it will move around. So that's what I want to look at on here and just see how good this machine is, how much, how close it compares to the MacBook Pro. I think we're both gonna be mighty surprised. So that's virtually done over there. It's almost rendered out, okay. So that's done with, at 80% on the M2 MacBook Air. So I guess this is going to take about an extra two minutes maybe over the MacBook Pro. Time is 52 on there. So we'll see when this one exports. I reckon it's going to be about a couple of minutes extra this one's going to take. Um, right, so now we're going to use export. And the export I'm going to use is the preset that Premiere Pro give us for an 4K. That is the preset I'm going to use. I'm going to use one of mine to make sure it's exactly the same. The high quality 2160 is what we're using from both going into my downloads on both. I couldn't make this more similar if I tried. So if I now hit export, and let's just look at the time, it's 14.53. Sorry, I can't use a stopwatch, but that's on the phone, which I'm using to record this video. So let's export. And we are off to the races. Okay, so it's saying 13 minutes on here, nine minutes on there. Let's see how close to those times it actually achieves. On the MacBook Air, it seems to be settling around 14 minutes to export the same video, as opposed to five or six minutes on the MacBook Pro. So this is interesting for me because I've not done this experiment before. I had in mind to do it with you guys, but I wanted to do it at the same time that you were seeing it. So it looks like it's gonna be about almost three times as long to export on the MacBook Air, given the information we're being given at the moment which this is a surprise for me, but uh, let's see where things settle out to on the final export. I'm gonna sit here now, nice and quiet, and uh, just wait for these to render and export, and I will let you know on the timings. Okay, this is the moment, it's 100% finished, so I'll just wait for it to pop up, done, and the time, so it's four minutes longer it took on this, but as I said, there is a difference of 2,000 pounds. I wasn't doing this to show how much quicker this was, but just to show how good this was. This is an ultra portable notebook, and it did it only four minutes slower than that, which is one of the best Macs that's ever been made. Battery wise, barely made a dent, 73% on there, and over on the MacBook Pro, 60%. And temperature wise, it's warm, not hot, far from being hot. And in fact, I'll tell you what I could do if I went in to, I haven't got uh, Clean My Mac on here now, but on there, I could certainly show you what the so, so CPU U load is really like 10% as I'd expect it to be now it's finished. But they're warm, That's, that one's cool, nothing, no heat at all. So there's a little bit of difference, but four minutes for 2000 pounds worth of difference. And don't forget that's got 32 gigs of unified memory and this has got eight. There's a massive, massive difference of the kind of machines we're talking about here. And that's how good I think this is. It's such value for money. And that's doing the most extreme work that you probably ever want to do 
on this as a portable notebook, but how good is that? Just four minutes difference of exporting a 4K video. What I'm about to say probably, no, certainly sounds daft, but I don't care. This has come to be like almost my newborn during this week because there's been so much bad said about it, so much bad press given to it. I just felt somebody needed to stand up and say, you know what, it's a good machine. It really is a good machine. Of course, it's got its limitations. Of course, it's not as powerful as we've just seen as my M1 Max MacBook Pro. But I did that test for a reason to show that it was, what, three or four minutes apart. And the difference in cost, does that relate? Unless you're doing that kind of work and bigger files, bigger exports and that all of the time, would that really matter? If you're just doing a little bit of casual, say, iMovie work or something like that, and you're exporting videos once a week, twice a week, and they're small, three or four minutes isn't gonna make a big difference to you, is it? This machine is so good, it's so easy to use. When you get that out in the evening, I'm saying that, looking at the M1 MacBook Pro over there, you know you've got it on your lap. Well, this is really comfortable. You can sit there with a glass of wine, TV on, do some edits. It's really, really great to use. And somebody just needs to say, shut up. We are living in a great period. We are being given some fantastic machines. The M1 Max MacBook Pro I've got over there, the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pros we've currently got are probably gonna go down as some of the finest Macs that Apple have made, well, possibly ever, and certainly in recent history. They are fantastic, but they are for the people that need them. This is for everybody. This is the jack of all trades. This is the Mac for all people, the Mac for the masses, if you will. And it's a lovely machine. I'm really glad that I had the chance to get one last week. And I'm also glad I've put it through its paces. I've used it every day over the last week and it hasn't let me down. And I just feel somebody needs to say, it's good, as simple as that. Yes, it's got its limitations, but it's good. For the money that you're paying, I don't think you're going to find certainly a Mac that's equivalent to it and possibly even another ultra notebook that's as good as this. If you're thinking of getting one, go and get one, whichever model it is, the 256, the 512. Honestly, although I've not tried the 256, given the fact that I've rarely pushed this this week and the amount of headroom this has got, I think the 256 model will be just fine for you. So if you're thinking of getting a MacBook Air and you've been put off by some of the videos that have come out this week, don't. It's a really good machine. And that's all I wanted to say. We're living in a great period of tech and rather than moaning about it, I think we should embrace it. The bar has been risen and we are here enjoying what Apple are giving us. Go and try one. Let me know what you think of it. If you bought one, if you've got one on its way, let me know what specs you've got and maybe even just go into an Apple store to try one to start with. Let me know what you think. I love this little machine. It's gonna be with me, I think, pretty much day and night now. It's such a joy to use. That's all I've got to say about it. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the MacBook Air and get involved. Thanks for watching this video and I will catch you next time.